What's going on everyone, Charlie here. Man, I love research because not only do these people that write these cited works get most of their predictions correct from their empirical studies, but it's just fascinating to read about. So we're gonna look at a future prediction that we've already seen happen for the most part. This is entitled A New Normal for Interest Rates, Interest on Reserves Regime. So the general level of US interest rates has gradually but steadily declined over the past few decades. In the, in the 1980s and 1990s, falling inflation was the major impetus for this decline. But more recently, while yields have continued to trend lower, actual inflation as well as survey-based measures of longer-run inflation expectations have stabilized close to 2%. Some have argued that the continuing decline in interest rates since 2000 reflects a variety of persistent real-side factors. These real-side factors, such as slower productivity growth and an aging population, affect global saving and investment and can push down nominal and real yield curves by lowering the steady state level of the safe short-term real interest rate. This steady state real interest rate is often called the equilibrium or natural or neutral rate of interest and is commonly defined as the short-term real rate of return that would prevail in the absence of transitory disturbances. Other observers, however, have dismissed the evidence for a new lower equilibrium real rate. They downplay the role of persistent real-side factors and argue that yields have been held down recently by temporary factors such as the cyclical headwinds from credit deleveraging in the aftermath of the financial crisis. So far, this ongoing debate about a possible lower new normal for interest rates has been focused on estimates drawn from macroeconomic models and data. In this paper, we use financial models and data to provide an alternative perspective on the issue. Given the significance of the equilibrium real estate rate, many researchers have used macroeconomic models and data to try to pin it down. The best known use of these, Laubach and Williams, 2003 and 2016, infers the equilibrium real short rate by using the Kalman filter to distinguish the real interest rate trend and cycle within a model of the above definition of the neutral stance of monetary policy. As Laubach and Williams in 2016 define the natural rate of interest, it is based on a longer run perspective in that it refers to the level of the real interest rate expected to prevail, say five to 10 years in the future after the economy has emerged from, an, from any cyclical fluctuations and is expanding at its trend rate. This is precisely the perspective that we will take in this paper and it is the definition of the natural rate that we will employ, albeit using financial models and data. So interest rates have been going down over time um, steadily, but keep in mind these papers were written a few years ago. This one here that we're looking at was written in 2019. And then we're going to jump over to the interest on reserves regime. Now, this means by which the Federal Reserve sets the level of federal funds rate at a point in time is well known. In current practice, the Federal Open Market Committee or FOMC announces a target for the federal funds rate and instructs the trading desk at the New York Fed to use open market operations to provide the quantity of reserves and currency that the economy demands at that federal funds rate. The monetary base demand adjusts so that the implicit marginal liquidity services yield exactly matches the interest opportunity cost spread. That is, the federal funds rate target minus the zero interest rate on reserves. So this paper here basically was written in early 2000s and they were predicting the fact that the Fed would have to go to a zero rate uh, regime to gain control. And when you look at what they're talking about, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. So zero rates, it's all been part of the plan. So remember, everything I'm reading, keep in mind, this is important. It's written 10, 15 years ago. So it's saying what should happen, what could happen, what will have to happen if this happens. So thus the interest on reserves regime would enable the Fed to exercise control of the overnight interest rate exactly as it does now. It, it also did this 10, 15 years ago, just not to this extent. The main business of the FOMC would be to choose the interest rate paid on reserves, which actually, in reality now, it works opposite of that, which would govern the level of short-term rates more generally as the federal funds rate target does today under the Fed's current operating procedures. However, the interest on reserves regime would differ from the Fed's current operating procedures in one important respect open market operations would cease to support the interbank rate in the new regime. Open market operations would support neither the interest opportunity cost spread, which would be zero, nor the level of the interbank rate, which would be determined by the rate of interest paid on reserve balances at the central bank. 
Therefore, open market operations would be free to pursue another monetary policy objective. Lower the rates on purpose, control the overnight rate, pursue other objectives. That's exactly what we've seen happen. Now, specifically, a central bank would be free to target any aggregate quantity of reserves above the minimum required to keep the interbank rate at the interest on reserves floor. Remember when the Fed took over in 2019? Remember COVID? That was to set up this entire situation. The kink in the reserve demand locus reflects the fact that the quantity of reserves demanded rises as the market interest rate falls and becomes infinitely elastic when the market interest rate hits the rate paid on reserves. Reserve supply is vertical at the aggregate quantity of reserves supplied by the central bank. As long as the supply of reserves is large enough to cut the horizontal portion of the reserve demand locus, this is important, as long as it's large enough, the demand of reserves, as long as it's big enough to cut the horizontal portion of the reserve demand, the central bank could use open market operations to target bank reserves and independently use interest on reserves to pursue interest rate policy. Interesting, right? So it is noteworthy also, back at this time, that currently, back in early 2000s, the Bank of Japan is considering supplementing its zero interest rate policy with quantitative easing. Most monetary economists agree that aggressive open market purchases in Japan could stimulate aggregate demand even with short rates immobilized at zero. Such logic suggests that the independent use of quantitative policy made possible in an investment on reserves regime could be of considerable value even when the interest rate is not immobilized at the zero bound. Now, this is Japan. This is the SPAC's Fidelity Money Market Fund. You can go look at this. this is the Office of Financial Research. Look at the asset purchases that occurred from Japan leading up to today. Second most uh, invested in country by money market funds, which is the money market funds are dealing with the Fed and the overnight repo facility. Now contrast that possibility with what would happen in the interest on reserves regime. The central bank would control the overnight interest rate tightly with its interest on reserves policy instrument without any opportunity cost of reserves. Bank would continue to transfer reserves deposits among themselves, which is exactly what they do, to settle payments or to settle payment orders initiated by their depositors. However, Banks would greatly enlarge their inventory of reserves, which we have also seen happen. Stockouts would be infrequent, and banks would re redistribute reserves among themselves much less often via the interbank credit market. The overnight interbank market might become less active or disappear altogether, but only because banks had more economical way to manage their reserves in an interest on reserves regime. For our last look into the future, we consider what would happen if the technological progress in the payment system caused the monetary base to lose its medium of exchange role gradually and to completely lose that role eventually. This could happen if the banking system developed an electronic settlement system independent of the central bank and currency was abandoned in favor of electronic devices that could access bank deposits remotely. IOT, exactly what's happening. Now, Paying interest rates on reserves would seem to be expensive from the Treasury's point of view. This is financing interest rates, which gets very interesting. Interest earnings ordinarily transferred by a central bank as tax revenue to the Treasury would be diverted to pay interest on reserves. Moreover, the payment of interest on reserves would induce banks to enlarge substantially the quantity of reserves demanded, greatly enlarging the interest that a central bank would have to pay. This section addresses the financing of interest on reserves and argues that the financial implications are likely to be more favorable than might be supposed. Implementing an interest on reserves regime has two effects on government finances. First, there is an effect due to the increase in reserves deposits and assets acquired by a central bank as a result of the regime change. Right here. That's exactly what they've been doing. They've been changing this regime. Second, there is an effect due to the payment of interest on pre-existing reserve deposits. I consider these in turn. Whoever wrote this is a fucking genius. Remember this? Securities financing transaction service? That's how they're going to finance it all. They got it mostly right. Other than the fact that the Fed is not controlling the rates. The market participants are. So 
like I've been saying this whole time, like I've thought this whole time, is the Fed being held hostage by money market funds, BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanguard? Is that what's going on? Could be. Run up the rates or lower the rates, increase the demand of reserves, and then basically hold the Fed at gunpoint. It's going to be an interesting few months, that's for sure.